Todd, I'm excited to have Todd on here because he's a, a, a realtor that gets it. He runs a team. Him and his team are on track to do 180 transactions. And Todd really focuses on going after quality clients and working with quality folks and, and not necessarily quantity, even though 180 transactions is a lot of deals. And I believe your team is only six, including you, right, Todd? Todd. Yeah, support staff and agents. Right now we're at six. Yeah, at six. So, and I think only three of them are agents. The rest are support staff. So those are really great numbers. And he also specializes on getting his listings taken at 7.5%. Just so you know, we're going to do future uh, hangouts, and that's going to be one topic. And Todd, at a later date, is going to be sharing how he takes 7.5% listings. And I believe like 95, 98% of those listings you take are 7.5%, right, Todd? Yep, you got it. All right, great. And he also does radio shows and helps other agents and coaches other agents, helps them get up to production. He just loves to share. So I'm really excited to have him on here. Um, so why don't we get going, okay? Oh, and then another thing we're going to be also doing is we're going to be going over seller lead generation enhancement, okay? Future ones that we're going to be doing. And just so you know, Todd took one listing, booked five appointments, um, and set up four referrals um, off only spending $72.90. So Todd's going to go over all that at the very end. So we're saving the best for last. So let's dive in. So you better hang out. So let's dive into going over the tool. You can find where to edit the tool in the back of the, the website admin page. It's at the very bottom, seller lead generation tool and settings. You click enable and configure. <clears throat> there will be a box where you can click to enable it. It'll ask you to make sure that if you want to um, enable it, because you're going to be charged $50 for this. Um, we're using a third-party vendor for the property data, so we got to pay them for API calls. So that's why we're charging. We normally don't charge for a bunch of add-ons. And then once you click that, it'll check enabled. <clears throat> the landing page, it'll give you a landing page where you need a link to, whether it be from your navigation, what's my property worth, um, or create a call to action. It's not going to just appear on your website. It is a page on your website, but you've got a link to it. So just remember that, okay? And then you need to know that URL if you're driving traffic from outside sources. So it gives you that URL. Uh, it gives you two automated home valuation autoresponder emails that go out to the person that fills out the form. And it'll say property value for 123 Main Street, whatever they type in in the subject. It goes through, it says, hey, thank you for using our property valuation tool. It's a great way to get broad range estimate for the value. So this thing is not an exact science. We do a broad range. It's the seller lead generation tool. And then in this autoresponder, it's telling them that, OK? So don't get hung up if it's not exactly perfect, OK? We're trying to generate potential sellers so you can call them and follow up and get listings, OK? And then it just says the best way to get the most accurate value for your property is using the MLS data, the same data that's available to us realtors and appraisers. Okay, make sure you scroll to the bottom, you add your um, signature. We have a green, big, bold says, hey, remember to add and edit your email signature. The second one is for somebody that punches in their address, it goes to the next page, and they don't get a home valuation, they have to enter in. Not their address, but they got to enter bedrooms, baths, and stuff like that. So the system's not able to recognize their address. So there's an autoresponder for that. And it's basically telling them, hey, thank you for requesting a custom home valuation report. You know, we'll be getting one out to you ASAP, something like that. Okay, so we have two different autoresponders. At the very top of this landing page attributes, you got the header text. <clears throat> The header text controls the actual visual text by the house in the top of the landing page right there. So you have full control of that. The next is the page title. That is, it shows up at the top of the browser and tells the search engines what this page is about. Okay, it's the title of the page. Um, you, it's, so right up here in my tab, it says property home valuations. I could actually have that different and say, hey, Hawaii property home valuation report and you know house prices or something like that if I'm trying to get this page to rank for that. The pages should be able to rank if you have enough site authority and some inbound links. Okay? <clears throat> and then you got the meta description, which shows up 
underneath the title if you're showing up in the search results. And on this one, we, you know, we just got get home price values of your home, condo, and property in Hawaii. Really simple, okay? Meta keywords, kind of a search engine thing. They don't even, I don't think, pay attention to that. But if you get hung up and you want a bunch of keywords and stuff it in there, knock your heart out. Um, example search address. Okay, so we didn't have this when we first rolled it out, but we got a lot of feedback. Hey, I don't, I don't live in Hawaii. My guys put a Hawaii address in there. So you're able to change that to whatever address more local for you. So they got that actually added pretty quickly. So I'm going to show you where that is on the, the landing page. That would show up in the, the box where they start typing in an address. So you can put, you know, example, you know, 123 Main Street, uh, Dallas, Texas, you know, whatever that is, okay? So you, can, you have control of that. Let me go back to the admin here. <clears throat> we have landing pages, images. We went and bought a bunch from um, some image, you know, where you can buy images and license them. So we got 15 in there. I plan on adding maybe five or seven more. I think more the better because we're optimizing to load fast and still look good. You can upload your own custom image, and we recommend the size of 18 by 1300 pixels and not bigger than 700 kilobytes, okay? So if you put too big of an image, like 3 megs or 2 megs, it's going to take a long time to, to load, okay? Now the footer area, we just have it typed, no logos. We made this unbranded so you can convert from all different sources, and it looks like a more official home valuation tool, okay? So you can put your company in there, like American Dream Realty Hawaii. And then we have a seller navigation bar. So here, right here is the company name. You can type that in, the lower left of the landing page, and here's the navigation. You can pull in some of your other navigation. We gave you that ability. But I think less is better here. You don't want to make the page busy. You want them to be focused on getting an instant home property valuation. You'll have a higher conversion rate, OK? The more crap and clutter they have to look at, the less likely they're going to stay focused, OK? Um, let me see. So that's it on the back end and sending up. Oh, and you have to remember to always hit save in the lower right corner. When you're enabling it and going through, you still got to hit save even though you agree to it. And if you go back and make any ch changes, you always hit save in the lower right corner, OK? All right, so the, we're going to go over the lead manager changes. So on the dashboard, we have this new potential lead or potential seller lead tab. Now, those are, not, those are leads that actually started the process. They typed in their address, and they never, they went through, and then when they're asked to sign up, they stopped. So those are potential. They're, we can't dump them in the lead manager because they're not an actual person. All we have is an address. So those type of people, we capture that address, and then the system will send it over in an hour. We got to time and wait. So from when they submit their address and then go on and do the other pages, if they don't complete it within an hour, it's going to shoot over an email notification to you, the agent, as a potential seller lead. Okay, it'll say potential seller lead, and then it'll dump it in this table. So then you can do the research, look up the tax records, and stuff like that. Okay, um, like the, the, these couple, they didn't even put in an address. I don't know what happened there, but you can see right here, these are people that punched in addresses, started the process, and then they're all potential leads. Okay, so now you can research the tax records and call them, email them, send a note, whatever you want to do, okay? So I'm going to go back to my, um, so that's what's handled with those, okay? And that's this tab over here. And they, the only one that gets the potential seller lead notifications is either an admin or team leader, just so you know, okay? It's not going out to the agent, okay? And then seller lead over here. We have a seller lead. So it'll take you to the list, and it's filtering, if you look at advanced, by role as seller. Okay. As soon as they fill out that out, it marks and tags the person as a seller in the detailed lead page. There's Sarah. She's one of our clients. Anyway, so it comes over here in this type, seller. Okay. So now you can click on those and filter by those. But here's the deal. It also filters if you manual, if you click on that, it's, it's also pulling in, in manually that you might have spoken to that came in from the property search and marked seller. We are working on a future uh, a tag that you can sort them just from this tool. 
that'll be out in the future enhancements, okay? So you got seller leads, potentials, okay, so let me see, that's dashboard. Okay, so notifications, let's go to settings. Okay, go on down here. So I'm an admin, so I got a lot of more settings than everybody else, but um, on the settings, we got this, oh, okay, just so you know, if it's a new person and they comes in as a new person, they've never been on the website and they're asked to sign up, it'll come in as a new lead, but the, the email will say new seller lead. So that way you know it's somebody that actually came in, not from the property search, but as a seller lead, okay? So it comes in as a new lead, round robin, and I'll go over that, and then we got seller leads value inquiry. So you're going to also get an inquiry. Anytime they fill that out, you're going to get an email emailed to you of the person, if they filled out the information or if they're an existing customer, of a seller leads valuation inquiry. And you'll get an email, and it'll have their name, a link to the lead manager to get to them, and their property address, and all the valuation report that was given to them. So you're going to get that in an email. Um, let me go here on my email. I have an example one of those. So yeah, here's a new seller lead notification. Here's a new seller valuation inquiry. So it came in to me, gave me Sarah's contact information, assigned to me because I'm the one that's, you know, the round robin, the link to the lead manager, the property valuation report, and all that. So you can then call them right on the spot, okay? So you can get those, you can get them text, what have you. And then you can also, if you're an admin, get those same ones, seller leads, valuation inquiry. So let's say your agents are getting these things and you're the admin. You want to know when these things are getting filled out. You can then be getting those same notification and emails. And um, because the system, if the person's already been on the website, and we built it on the website, so if they're cookied already on the website, when they go through this process, they're not going to be asked to sign up. This is going to go right to the report. It'll be smooth and easy, and then you'll get that notification, okay? So if they came in through the property search, and they fill this thing out, and they're cookied in, the, the assigned agent will get that notification if they have that check, and then the admin can also know, and it'll say, hey, assign to, to Bob Smith, and, you know, and so the admin can get that, okay? So settings, email subject, clear seller. Okay, so let me go. We're still in settings, lead assignment. Here's something we had to change with this because people have, you know, teams like myself, and I want certain people working the, the seller leads campaigns we're going after and certain people working the property search. So we changed the round robin titles. The property search is the round robin, anyone available for that. That's the normal search going on the website when they're asked to sign up. Now we have this property valuation round robin. So you can have different agents working different things, okay? And it only works so if they're first-time visitor and they haven't signed up, okay? The, with the round robin for the seller, okay? It's not going to reassign somebody that came in on the property search and now reassign it to someone. We're not going to do that. It comes in, they've, you've driven them to the page, or they came off your website, they never signed up, and then it goes through this round robin, okay? So that is that, the round robin. So we're rolling around here, trying to not take too long here. So let's go to the, the actual um, website here. Let me just uh, make sure I'm not logged in. Let me just sign out. Okay, I didn't want to be logged in. Okay, so you can come in here. The, you drive traffic here. I'm going to walk you through how this thing works, okay? They type in an address, 148, uh, Pulu. Uh, all right, they, they click the, their address, they submit it, they're taken to this, it actually, um, it actually will pull up uh, a view on the map of their property based on the Google Map API, it'll say property type, how many bedrooms, baths, square feet, excellent. I think we should probably change that to great or fair and then let them change it, excellent, every, no one's changing that. But anyway, so they're out there. They go, wow, that's pretty cool. Now they click um, verify property details and give valuation. All right, yeah, this seems easy. And then it goes to there, bam. And then in the light box pops up and covers all the valuations, but they're able to see all what they're going to get, the type of um, data they're going to be able to get. Up here it says 
estimated property valuation for you know 148 Kaili Pulu Drive, Kailua, and then I mean property history, last sold date, last sold you know price if they available, property value, low estimate, high confidence rating, rent value, you know low estimate whatever, property details. Now <clears throat> this particular property doesn't have nearby sales, but a lot of the properties will have nearby cells and those be below there and it'll show the addresses but we will have the data like the sold price and date is covered up by a black box so they can see all the data you know the address and stuff so the nearby cells but they can't see the prices okay um, that's not happening in on, on this property and then they're asked to sign up okay well let me see let me do Jeff Anson test BD, I can tell I've done this too many times. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Choose interest. I want an awesome realtor. Access value report, and bam, now they got the value report. Okay, <clears throat> it's not to be exact science. Okay, um, so that's how it works. And then as soon as they do that, it'll go in to the round robin. Okay, who's available? Assign it to that person. That person will get a new lead notification, and they'll also get the, the property valuation email. And then the user will get that autoresponder. Hey, thanks for using our tool. It's a great way to get broad range thing, and it goes. Okay, so that's that's how the the tool works. Now let me show you. Let me. Bear with me, Todd. We'll get to you soon. I'm sorry. I'm gonna go here. No, you're good, man. I just I'm just sitting here thinking how awesome this thing is. As you're getting, even though I've been using it, I think having the the property photo pop up is so amazing and it's so well timed because they're sitting there thinking, <laughs> I wonder what this freaking thing is, and then it's like, oh, there's my house. This is real. I want that. And so there's no yeah, way yeah. they're not no, taking and that step. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. That's actually my house, but. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I don't know why those guys did that to me, but um, anyway, um, so you go in here. So now, here's one. My guys found, gave me one in address. Actually, the developer that developed this is in Brazil on vacation right now. He's from Brazil, and we love him to death. And I emailed him last night. I said, I'm giving this demo. What's an address that doesn't give a property valuation? So he sent it to me. So let's find out. One, two, three, four. Alapai Street, Honolulu. Okay, so this supposedly, I, 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 uh, logged out. So this supposedly is not going to give me a valuation, okay? So boom, what it does is it doesn't give you a valuation. I think it still tries to find the building or whatever, and it'll pop that based on the, the Google auto select. And it pulls in the city, you know, the address, the city, that. So it, it partially fills it out, but we don't know because the, it didn't find the valuation using the API because it's not going to hit 100% of the time. So then the user can then go in and put, oh, it's uh, you know, whatever single family home, bedrooms four, three, square footage, twelve thirty, condition, great. I need to sell ASAP. I don't know, whatever. They whatever notes they want, or hey, my house is, you know, got an unpermitted room. Then it asked we wanted to put all that information and try to pull in their address or something on the map, so then ask for their information last, okay? And then they punch this in, and then they've got to punch in to get their valuation. So they get on and do all the way. Now, if they don't finish it, it still's got their address, and we'll go into that potential seller lead thing, and then you got to do some uh, investigating and get their address. I mean, I wish I had this back in the day when I was calling expires and work. I was a major listing agent. I would have been pounding this tool. Because I love going and knocking on doors and talking to people and getting in their face. Especially if they didn't give me their stuff, I'd be right in their face. Anyway, not obnoxious because I wanted to help, but I was very uh, motivated and active, okay? So let's go here. Okay. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay. And then, bam, it says, thank you for submitting your property. An agent will be reaching out to you with a property home value valuation report at the address, and then they got you. Then you want to lead them. Hey, start a new valuation report or search all properties for homes. Okay. 
I think down the road we're going to see about actually adding, being able to bring in the search tool here so they could start a new one and also have pull in your, um, your, your uh, search off your, your website, kind of like the actual search. That may be in uh, phase two or three, okay? But, so at least now they have somewhere to go and it's telling them. So if, they, if you get these partial ones, a partial one, and what it will do is in the notification, it'll tell you that there was no valuation provided because when we send over the email, if there's a valuation, we send the stuff. But if there is no valuation, that's your cue. You better follow up with this person because the website just told them that you're going to be doing it. You should be following up with every single one of them. You shouldn't be using technology to wait for them to come to you. Use technology as a trigger to find the harder potential prospects and then follow up with them and see what you can do to help. And that's why I love Todd because Todd is awesome at doing that. Um, I think that's it. Um, you probably could see all these uh, new seller leads and stuff like this that just came in from me doing it. So you got a new seller lead. And then here's one, uh, a la Papa. It says right here, no, it's the bottom of the address. It still has the address and whatever they filled in because we got that. But then it says no automated property valuation was provided to this user. Please follow up and provide one. Okay? So make sure you do that. Otherwise, people are going to just think you're a flake. All right. Um, hey, Todd, I want to bring you in now because I know um, that you've been doing some things. And I also just want to also cover there's different ways of driving traffic. Um, one, you know, one good way would be Google AdWords and then Facebook. And then we got a client, Justin Rollo, that has a blog page or he pays the blog on the Boston.com. And I was actually in Phoenix last week, and he texted me, oh, you'll never believe it. Like, this thing's crazy. I had 350 sign-ups. And I texted him back, I'm all, 350? Were they sign-ups? And he said, yeah, I had like 800 total, but 350 of them signed up off his blog post. So there's all different ways to drive this. I think Google AdWords is probably, if you think of user intent, is um, probably the, the, going to be the best quality lead. You're going to have to have, call less people because if they're Googling something like home values and prices and they fill it out, they're actually looking for that. Facebook is probably going to be a little more of a numbers game. But Todd crushed it, like I said, on the, um, Facebook. He only ran, like, what was the figure, $72 or something like that. And he, and he got one listing appointment off one appointment. He's got five booked, and he's picked up some referrals. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to Todd so he can start sharing and I can take a break. Let me find you on the list here, Todd. I'm all excited again going through all this stuff. There's so many pieces of this that were done really well from the get-go. Um, so, I mean, I, I even love all the photo options, which obviously you can you can upload your own stuff in there and uh, and play with it. I don't know if everybody can see my screen. Let me. Yeah, I can see your screen. It came, it came on over. Okay. Okay. Um, but so one of the things we did is we went in and set the set our page up, and then we we selected several of the different you know auto select photos that you guys loaded in there for us, and just did quick screenshots of those so that we can use different ones in different ads to target you know different type of clients, different property types. Um, so, you know, we, we've used Facebook a bunch so far just because we wanted to do some low-cost testing. But you can imagine, even whether you're using AdWords, pay-per-click, or whatever, if you want to target some different areas, that photo is really powerful. Um, so yeah, as simple as that is, it's awesome. So I'm in Dallas, Texas, um, and it, it's a, a huge market, and we have obviously hundreds of sub-markets within that. Um, so if you can see my screen right now, this is one of the first Facebook ads we ran, um, and we, you know, we used a specific, you know, area neighborhood called Lake Highlands in our area, um, and uh, and it, it stirs up specific targeted, you know, responses. And I think we're doing like five dollars a day on some of these things, and um, and getting pretty good response. I will tell you uh, what everybody should absolutely do, which doesn't cost anything. Um, is one of these guys right here. Uh, the first one I did, I didn't even use the image. I just did straight text, and I just said, find out what your house is worth right here. 
and then I threw in possibly the greatest tool I've added to my business in years. And um, right out of the gate, we got a bunch of people coming through there. Obviously, personal contacts, um, but that got shared a few times. We, we posted a couple of different ways. And then I basically came back and did the same thing with the image and just said, so stinking cool. Um, you know, not trying to sell, but just trying to share the, the, this uh, widget, this resource with people, and obviously generated some significant leads. So this is actually the one right here uh, that we got a uh, really good sign up, quick call back, a, point, a listing appointment went out, picked up the listing. They'll also be a buyer moving up. Um, awesome. So that one was solid. So th these first couple weren't targeted in any way. Uh, they were to, you know, existing Facebook friends and contacts, uh, hoping to get some shares out of it and hoping to get some responses. You know, some people will like your post as opposed to clicking it, and that's that's fine because if they're if you've got that contact, you could even follow up with them there. Um, I'm with you on following up on absolutely everything. Um, I think treat it like a buyer lead. I mean, if you can follow up within a minute or two, that's fantastic. Now, if somebody is specifically selected, you know, I'm just playing, you know, be careful. Obviously, you want to want to script out and, and, and do different things with different lead types. But I think every single person that runs through this deserves a response. And I'll tell you, the referral thing is really exciting. So we're in Dallas, but we ran we run some of these ads, obviously, that aren't geographically specific. So um, this is just a post I did, but we've done some sponsored uh, paid ones like this without the geographic targeting. Um, and, and I went in and set my target within my ad just statewide and picked up a couple of referrals uh, in San Antonio, one in Austin, and probably one or two more in Houston. Um, so, you know, you just never know where these things are going to lead to. It's such a low cost deal that I would absolutely not overlook the referral aspect of this um, because it can be such a huge part of our business. So anyway, I, I'm excited about it from like a hundred different angles and uh, you have the ability to do it with extremely low cost marketing with something like Facebook or a really well done targeted pay-per-click campaign. So, you know, you could use the same images, you can use targeted geographic text, you could use price specific text. Um, the other thing that we're definitely going to do, I mean, this is very new, but what we're definitely going to do in addition to uh, doing some research and following up with the prospective leads, uh, trying to go knock on some doors and make some phone calls, but also we're setting up a postcard campaign. Simple, simple, as cheap as can be looks exactly like this Facebook ad with that image and the bar and everything on there just with our link below and that's where you could do some customized linking if you want uh, you know with a with a forwarded or a, or a masked domain you know here I could put you know Lake Highlands home values .com or whatever um, I'll give I'll give folks a little tip what I've done in my area is I've gotten the zip codes dot info um, so that's a great one to use for like a postcard like that. You know, find out what your house is worth, you know, 77068.info kind of thing. Those are super, super cheap and you can get a ton of them. Um, so we're, we're about to roll those out. We're going we're gonna to look at postcards. We're definitely going to do some pay-per-click with it. Um, and so far, Facebook has worked out really well, both targeted, generic, and then targeted statewide uh, with some referral things and we're we're using like I said different photos and different ads um, just the property type or the photo that represents that area most specifically and then we even did some without the images we also did on the first page of our site let me see if I can pull that up real quick um, and I'm sure there's a much much better way to do this um, hey it's all trial, again, and trial and error yeah, so if you can see my site right there, we you know we just grab the image and we link that right there on the page. They click it and they bounce over right there. So that's how we put it on our on our home page. And then you know we're going to build it into some other links. Probably going to do a little video about it and get that on YouTube and, and get some links there. Um, you've got the ability to do one of these on all your area pages if you really wanted to. So we're we're playing with it. 
But those are a, a few of the different ways that we're looking at using it now. A couple of the things that I would point out though specifically is um, the potential leads, you know, unless you're just a genius at all this stuff, you're going to get those in more volume, but I would look at those as fantastic pipeline business. Um, so that's the way I'm doing it. I, right now I'm handling every single one of these seller leads myself because we don't want to overlook any of this opportunity. And, and in our business, I'm happy to admit, you know, it's, it's much, much easier to get a buyer lead and our buyer lead follow-up system is very well dialed in and we have very good conversion and we know exactly what we want to do. Seller lead, we just don't have the quantity and we have different sources that are handled differently. So, you know, our radio leads are a much different lead than a, than a motivated seller lead type deal. So we're going to try to use this tool to generate different kinds of seller leads with different kinds of marketing. I've even thought about doing a custom domain for this and, and, and testing the radio ads we do, uh, pushing them to this uh, to get a, a larger response rate. But we'll look at a bunch of different things, but I just wanted to show a couple of things that we're already doing. Um, happy to talk more about some ideas we have going forward, but I'm, I'm really big on follow-up and systematic follow-up. So we haven't made huge changes, but I did come in um, to the follow-up uh, autoresponder stuff, and, and we just changed a couple of things here uh, that would tie more specifically into how we do business. So I would encourage people to tinker with this as little as possible because I think it was really well done. But certainly set yourself up for a victory on your follow-up. So if you've got some things you do uniquely, I'd come in here and tweak this a little bit. Obviously, you guys have given us the ability to do that. So uh, part of my presentation on the listing side, which which we're extremely confident in, obviously you already mentioned we, we do higher fees and things like that, and we've got a very high close rate. But part of that is because we really focus on differentiating. So I just built some of that in here to the follow-up. Um, I, I usually talk to clients about how comps can be really dangerous and, and MLS data only can be really dangerous. So I just built that back in right here and just said, you know, the best way to get the most accurate market value for your property is using the MLS data, the same data available to us as realtors and appraisers, as well as other important factors such as the local job market, political climate, mortgage environment, and many more. Just so even the people that got the value and felt like it was accurate, might feel compelled to still have a conversation with us because we're going to follow up either way, but we're just wanting to plant a seed so that our script when we follow up is, you know, is, is met, you know, pretty welcome. Uh, I agree with you. We kept the, we kept the signature really simple, not a whole lot of need for a bunch of extra links and branding. This should be a, uh, a collect as many leads as possible kind of thing. I, I don't want to play jack around with branding on this and, and waste a bunch of time and energy and lose leads. So I think you're dead on there. Um, I, I didn't play with much of this at all, uh, but I did um, in, in some of our ads. I tweaked that a little bit and, and did some screen capture in some of our ads. Let me see. Like So right here I put, find out what your house is worth in one minute or less. Um, so I'm just playing with some of those things. If if speed is going to going to increase our response rate or the quality or it may may lower quality, but so we're playing with those different things. Um, I can keep talking until you tell me to shut up. But do you have any thoughts on any of that or anything you want me to share? Yeah, I have some questions for you. So on the targeted one like that, like the Lake Island on mm -hmm. the Facebook, are you targeting that specific uh, zip code? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, so I'm setting the ad up like this, and then I'm going in when I create my ad. I'm, I'm specifically targeting that neighborhood, that zip code. And then, you know, we're playing with it on age range that's most likely to sell. I don't like some of the Facebook selects. You know, they're bringing in a lot of data, which is giving us a lot of power to do some cool marketing <laughs> stuff. But some of it is you're going to really limit yourself if you select, you know, likely to move or some of those things in there. They're just The data is just not that accurate. So... We're looking at age range and relationship status and income and some of those things, but we're also occasionally just opening it up to zip code or okay. um, e even so like a 25 mile radius. You are using some of the advanced data, the age, income, and stuff like that on some of them. Um, let me see. Another thing is the referral fees. You know, I, and you hit on that. You already had some referrals because you opened it up. 
I right. wanted to just share that <clears throat> your existing customers, if they start seeing that in some of the marketing you're doing and on the website, hey, how much does my home worth get instant value like Todd's doing, and they're already using the website, <clears throat> and they go and fill that out, now you have an additional um, trigger. They're a potential seller, and if they're out of area, so like let's say I'm in L.A. living there, and I've been using Todd's site and updates, and I go on there, and hey, what's my home worth? And I fill that out, my L.A. address. Now Todd or someone on his team gets that and goes, oh, they've been using the website. They've been looking at all these homes in uh, Highland Parks or, or whatever it is. <clears throat> but their property address they put in there is in L.A. So you can now call them and say, hey, by the way, I noticed you've been using my website for looking at properties. And also notice you just entered a, uh, an L.A. address on a get my valuation tool. Are you looking to sell that property to move here? If so, I network with a lot of the top agents across the country. Would you like me to hook, up, hook you up with one of them? So if you do that, now you're building a relationship. You're going to get a referral fee. And now if you hook them up with an agent, you're, you're helping them out. And it creates that um, trust. And then yep. you can help them when they relocate there, right? Yep. And, and I always tell people that I'm working with on their businesses, you know, so many people overlook so much referral opportunity, and we've we've gotten much better at it over the last few years. But um, I can't remember whose script it is, but I'm a big scripts guy, and I borrow all the time. Somebody said their go-to script was, "I can help anyone anywhere. If you have a friend moving from Florida to France, give me a call first, and I'll connect them with some really great people." Just like you said, because I network with the best agents all over the country and all over the world. To be honest with you, so. Even if you just put this tool out to your database and say, hey, we just added this really, really cool functionality to our website. Hello. Just wanted you to know it's totally free. Use it anytime. Hello? And feel free to share this with your friends all over the country, anywhere. Uh, it's really, really cool, and it works anywhere. I actually, Jeff, had someone sign up from Canada the other day, and it worked perfectly. Um, so I, I think it's really cool just simply to share it as a value add. I call it pain of disconnect. You know, we, we want our clients to be connected and in and, and relationship with us for as long as we can and as closely as we can. And you want to make it hard for them to, to wander off, you know. So, you know, every time I need something, it, it, it's so easy to get it from Todd and his team. That's what you want them thinking. It's, it's just not worth wandering off to somebody else. So this is just another one of those tools. And I'll tell you one way that I'm about to use it, like literally in the next few days. Um, Property valuations are coming out, like tax valuations, what homes are taxed on, and 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 property taxes are different in different states. But in our state, it's it's a big deal. We don't have income tax, so we've got a pretty significant property tax. But I know I've researched. Yeah, I, that was a jab. I didn't know if you were going to comment. Um, but what we'll do is we'll we'll send this out to all of the all the homeowners in our database and say, hey, just wanted to let you know we had this tool created. If you're thinking about protesting your property tax evaluation this year, you, you know, run your property through our evaluator and then let us know if you feel like it was high. We may be able to show you some ways to get to support a lower value so that you could go protest that. And then we get to do them a favor and, and we, we build a kind of a win for them. And that's a great you know, opportunity to ask for some referrals uh, oh, at yeah. a real high point for them. So yep. if you're, you know, in your areas, as those tax valuations come out, you've got to use this value tool as a lead generator or just a, a, an excuse to connect and say, look, we'd be happy to help you protest your, your tax valuation. Start here, run it through, and then, uh, and then let me know if you'd like to, to look at getting your value lowered. The good news in our area right now is that the val this tool is pretty accurate, and if anything, it's a little high, which makes people happy. But we want for the tax value thing that that might scare them just enough to to follow up with you and, and get your you know personalized help to to lower that tax bill. So um, well, that's that, that's a great way of following up and a great idea because like you said, if they're consuming your content, your listings, or any other help, and 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 you offer that help, they may not be looking to buy or sell in the the near future, but they probably know somebody, and if they know somebody or hear one of their friends and you just help them with their taxes, they're going to go, man, I know the best real friend in Dallas. Yep. God, man, he's awesome. He, he helped me do this. you know. And then you get more business because of it. 
Yeah, and I and like I said, I think just sharing that with anybody anywhere because it's not market specific to you. I mean, I don't know if everybody's tested it, but literally, I'm in Dallas, basically the center of the country, and I've already had people from California, Florida, Canada, and and everywhere in between jump on this thing. And you better believe we're, I'm going to follow up with every single one of those and either try to get a deal, a referral, or a you know, or a, a step deeper in relationship with these people. So. I'm just I'm fired up about this thing from almost every angle. And awesome. uh, hey, I, I have another question because a lot of these of, of our clients and um, they think everyone signing up on the normal property search are only buyers. They're like, oh my god, I, I want sellers. Yeah. And I have clients <laughs> like you, Tom Nickley in Orlando, which is a newer agent, and he, I think he just took like two listings this last week or something. Are you there? Can you hear me, Jeff? These are not all first-time buyers. Come on, folks. Sellers start looking at properties before they put their home on the market. So I'm going to let you um, expand on that, Todd. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, you cut out there for a second, but I know what you were saying. We um, Absolutely one of the primary questions you want to ask in your buyer follow-up script is, you know, do you have a home that you're wanting or needing to sell before you buy? Um, and so we're, we're going to build this tool into our follow-up system for buyers, but we already have, uh, that's part of our initial script once we make contact. If we haven't made contact, one of the very first emails that goes out is literally, this is the entire email. Jeff, do you have a home that you would want or need to sell before you buy? Todd, that's the entire email. No baloney, no crazy footer, no crazy uh, email signature. Uh, and we get pretty good response rate to that, much higher than a normal email. Um, and we we get a you know we get a decent number of sellers that way. The the key is to understand what you said, which is even if they're not ready now, a significant percentage of those buyers do want or need to sell first. And what that may not be what they're saying to us when they say we're not ready, uh, we're waiting on a job transfer or whatever, but if we're able to better communicate how much we can help and we all assume that the you know that homeowners know what we do but they don't know what we do um, right. they don't always understand that if I'm moving from another market you might be able to help me find an agent in my market they don't always know that you can help both buyers and sellers I can tell you on our team in the early days of specialization where we had you know dedicated buyer agents and, and listing marketing agents People would legitimately think that we only did one or one or the other because the agent they were talking to only did one or the other. So whether you use this tool or not, obviously you have to recognize that a big chunk of those buyers are sellers. And and, and this is not what you asked, but I feel compelled to share it. I tell my team all the time, just because someone's not active on our search site doesn't mean they're not an active buyer. You know, there's a hundred websites they could be on. Well, in Dallas, there's there's thousands, but they signed up. They went through a couple of hurdles or hoops to get there. There's some interest there. Now, they may be over on, you know, Bob from Remax's website, but the fact that they signed up on our website means that they're, they could be a real deal buyer. And so they may be searching on somebody else's site, but if they signed up on our site, we better be following up. We better follow up quickly and frequently and with value. So I think you're dead on on the, the the buyer lead generator alone is a listing lead generator. But if you add this to your follow-up, you're going to find a lot of people kind of, I, I believe, and we're starting to see that, but you're going to start seeing a lot of those buyers all of a sudden become sellers that you never would have known about. Um, and a lot of those buyers that you never thought were buyers because you didn't know they had a home they needed to sell are going to start talking to us because this doesn't require any interaction. It's just, hey, in case you might need this, we built this for people that may need to sell, want or need to sell a home. So I think this needs to be incorporated in our buyer lead follow-up as well. Right, yeah, exactly. I agree 100%. Um, I think we kind of went um, a little bit long on this. Uh, okay. Let me see, only because I screwed it up at the beginning. Sorry about that, guys. Um, do you have any other things you want to share? I can keep talking, but if we want to leave some room for questions, that we can jump into that right now. 
Yeah, we can do that. Most of the questions, I just opened up the things. There's, they, there was a lot of feedback, you know, as far as echo, and also I wasn't showing the screen. So I'm trying to find some uh, some some questions. So if any of you guys have any questions, start firing them in now, and then I can read them to Todd, and we can do a little Q and A. Uh, I kind of messed it up. So most of the questions on the tool right now are like, "Hey, I can't see the screen. Are you going to show that?" And you know, that's my fault. I, I I was so worried about recording this thing, I forgot to show my screen. So if you guys Man, can start. I, I muted myself at one point, Jeff, because I, I wasn't sure if it was maybe feedback because my mic was on and I was hearing you. So I, I don't know if that was part of it, but hopefully the recording's clearer after that initial deal because I did mute myself. Yeah, and that's fine. And I think it might have been that because you're on a on a computer and I'm on a phone. You know, we might have to do another one of these. But uh, okay, so Todd, did you did you say ask if they're looking to sell in the first email response? Um, depends on if you've made contact yet, but I think that's our second email in our email follow-up. I'll first thing I'll say is don't rely only on email. That's really dangerous. But if yeah, you if you yeah if, if our agents have not reached them by phone yet, the automated system I believe it's our second email. The first one's just going to try to establish contact. The second one is going to try to you know recapture them as a lead as, as a more qualified lead but that email literally is Jeff do you have a home that you want or need to sell Todd yep okay here's one what kind of value do you add to your follow-up I'm not sure that exactly what he means by value but um. what wide open question uh, I think what he's I think I mentioned you got to make sure that when you're following up you're adding value uh, okay, so it. Some of the ways we can do that. I mean, this tool would be value. Uh, it would be a way for them to find out what their house is worth. Um, sending sending them educational information. Now, you don't want to educate and, and not give them a call to action or a compelling reason to to do business with you. But you do want to let them know that you understand where they are in the process and that you can show them how how to get through the process uh, safely and, and with some, you know, save some money, get a better house, you know, whatever those things are that they're wanting to do. So we, we call it entering the conversation that they're already having in their head. So, you know, if somebody just signed up on a website, the conversation they're having is probably something along the lines of, you know, should we move? When are we going to move? Is moving smart? So if your emails are saying, uh, hey, you may be in the information gathering stages of, possibly buying a home. Here's the first five things you may want to think about. You know, I don't, I don't know. That's probably a bad example, but point being, you want to give them information that helps them as opposed to simply saying, hey, will you call me? Will you call me? I can help you. I can help you. That is annoying and nobody wants to do business with that guy. No, exactly. Okay. And here's one of uh, uh, Melanie asks, can you explain the confidence number? Didn't see it in the docs anywhere. So the confidence number on there is how confident the data provider that uh, that their uh, values are. So if it's a 76, they're 76 com percent confident that it's pretty close. If it's a 20, then hey, they're not very confident about that value. So that's what the uh, the score is. And Jeff, and I, 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 go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. I think that confidence number thing is killer. You can totally use that in your follow up, and I have. I've said. Hey, I noticed you signed up for uh, value on my website. How, you know, how did how did it go? Did you feel like it was accurate? Hey, I noticed it was only 42% confident. Would you like me to to go a step further and, and just do one for you myself? How awesome is it? Even if they're totally happy to use that to create a little bit of doubt, so that they need you still. Um, I think that's a whole other tool that you could you could basically set a follow-up rule hey anybody less than 80 we're gonna send them this you know call with this script or send them this email or text um, I yeah, think that's, now that's awesome. thinking. yeah and then so now somebody just asked on the infusion soft integration and I know you use infusion soft as well um, it, it does it right now if they're a new lead it goes right into your normal action set on infusion soft my staff as we speak right now is working on a feature enhancement so we can have two action sets. So if they come in from the property search, it's going to go in your existing action set and fire off your buyer slash, you know, they're also sellers um, campaign. 
and then you'll have another setting with a different, if they come in as off the valuation form, you will be able to set a different action set. So now you can fire one, or it'll fire off a, a sequence that's more focused on sellers and stuff like that. So that is a future enhancement. Yeah, and just a note on that, Jeff, what we did for now is we went into our buyer follow-up and just tweaked it a little bit, and, you know, it's it's not as good as it was last week, but it's still functional to where it can serve both buyer and seller. So I'm not, I'm never, ever, ever going to pass up an opportunity to aggressively follow up on every single lead, but that, that will be huge. When I, like, when I'm working with coaching clients and they, they're taking these leads in and they don't have any follow-up system, that's, that's right where we start. There's just so much value in the follow-up. So I think that's going to be awesome. Yeah, and then someone asked about how you take 7.5% listings. I'm not going to have you answer that now. That's a whole yeah. other yeah. session we're going to do. And just so you know, folks, we are going to put a – we're going to start doing Google Hangouts and um, – as mastermind, we have a lot of great agents like Todd that are customers and that we network with across the country. And I want to start doing these mastermind Google Hangouts where we just get on with a guest or two and we just start masterminding and talking of a few topics we go over. But we're just going to go and go, go, go. So that is coming up, okay? Um, can we do some Google marketing through your website similar to the buyer side? Yes. And anyone that's in a real leads program, just so you know, we're going to include that. We're going to um, not going to charge extra for that. We thought about that at the beginning, and some of you may have heard that we may be charging extra for that. We're not going to do that. We are going to have a few customers that are doing our real leads that we're doing Google AdWords for. We're going to come up with a, a couple lists, fine tune it, and then offer that. So if you can take a portion of your budget, or add, I would just add on. I would add on additional budget and go after the seller lead stuff. Um, how does infuse, I'm not even going to do that one right now. Okay, my, it seems that the tool is better suited for, okay. Um, this one's just saying that uh, his market's very urban and that the tool is more suited for, um, you know, for single family homes and stuff. I if you if, if it doesn't work for you, don't use it or if it's not real accurate, but I would still probably try to use it. And if they can't find those properties, it's gonna tell them you're gonna get that information and you'll be able to follow up. Um, yeah, I, I I'm guessing that what he means is there's like unit numbers and all that kind of stuff. But here's the deal. Um, at the core, we've all got to be marketers, right? So this is something that's attractive and it captures potential clients' information. So if you can get 500 people to sign up and 480 of them don't get evaluation, great. Call them and say, hey, what can I do for you? I'll have to do that manually. Sometimes unit numbers don't work. Who cares? It gives you an opportunity to engage with a potential client. So obviously not everything's perfect, but I would be using this thing even if a tiny, tiny fraction got it to work perfectly for them. If it gets their info and gives me a chance to offer some value, I'm going to be using this bad boy. All right. So here's somebody. I, I, it was a suggestion. It wasn't really a question. He said you should include home ownership and Facebook demographics. So I haven't dove into the Facebook ads on that. So I guess you can choose whether they have a home ownership. Yeah, we're, we're looking at, we're testing it both ways. You know, none of none of this data is perfect, but some of it, is, you know, it's really really valuable stuff. So we're using uh, more of the simple stuff so far, but we are using some of the advanced selects from the data services that Facebook's got in there now. All right. Somebody asked, is the additional fifty dollars a month? month to month charge or am I committed to an additional term of service? It's month to month. Once you enable it, you can't disable it. You're going to have to contact support and they'll disable it. But it is a month to month. If you use it for two or three months and you say, hey, you know what, this just isn't for me, no big deal. You you uh, go to support on the Real Geeks website, not not the email, but support off the Real Geeks. There's a, a link up there. And tell them that you want to disable it and you're no longer using the service, they'll disable it and it'll come off your bill. <clears throat> um, let me see. How are you doing on time? I'm good. I've got I've got some more time. Okay. Okay. Can you give us 
a link to your email strip for initial and follow-up emails. Um, Todd, you can answer that one. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm happy to share uh, some of that. I mean, I'm happy to share as much as I can without a whole lot of time. I do some coaching and consulting, and I'm not trying. I'm not trying to pitch that here on this call, but. Um, I'd be happy to share that kind of offline and depending on at what level somebody needs, you know, time or anything. Yeah, I mean, he'll, he's like one email and stuff, yeah, but he's not going to – he uses Infusionsoft. He's not going to say, well, here, here's my Infusionsoft sequence that he's paid for and tweaked and done all that and say, oh, here you go. You can have it for free. I mean, come on. Um, but he will share some scripts or whatever. He'll, he'll shoot those over and maybe we can help. Yeah, I, I've already done that kind of stuff with a, a bunch of Real Geeks members. We, we've done group calls or traded emails, so I'm happy to share, and I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be stingy with that stuff. But it just depends on, you know, how much time it takes. But I'm happy to share with people and trade our best ideas and give you uh, some follow-up yeah. help and that kind of thing. And like I said, we're going to do future uh, sessions like this. We're going to do them with Craig Harrelson. I want to do them with uh, Bill Jenkins. Bill Jenkins is an agent <coughs> in Las Vegas. Excuse me, and he's also been a Mike Ferry coach, and he's now a Tom Ferry coach, and he's still killing it and crushing it. I just saw him last week in Phoenix at an Infusion Soft conference, and he told me, Hey, Jeff, I don't have time to prospect anymore. My ISA is booking me so many appointments, all I have time to do is go on listing appointments. And I'm like, Hey, Bill, isn't that what we prospect for? He said, Yeah, isn't that great. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that was the goal, right? <laughs> so I can't wait to get Bill on one of these calls because he's a great agent in Las Vegas. Uh, okay, Todd, what frequency would you post these ads to your Facebook sphere? Uh, to, to my own sphere, I'd be really careful. Um, I posted those, those first two um, like literally instantaneously. I posted this one... I was hoping it would show the timestamp, but I think it was like 8.30 at night. Literally, as soon as I made it live, I didn't sleep that night. I was so excited. So I threw this up, and then I think I did this the following afternoon. What does it say? 22nd, 23rd. Yeah. Um, and then I didn't do – this is a sponsored one, but um, I haven't done another personal one yet. Um, I don't have an exact answer to that, but I would say be really, really careful with your personal relationships. Don't beat those people up. Don't be the annoying realtor at the Christmas party. Um, no, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Obviously, you want to let them know you're a realtor, but you don't want to beat them up on Facebook. They're going to block you from the feed, and then now you're not able to stay in touch with your past clients and center of influence. Come on. But, you know, people use overuse technology and beat the hell out of people. I mean, yeah. you've got to really watch that. Okay, someone – okay, uh, can you recap the Facebook ad for an out-of-state referral? Um, yeah. Um, so if you were to run an ad like this that has no geographic targeting anywhere, uh, you're going to get people you know, from your sphere of influence. I mean, it, what I need to do next time is say, feel free to share this with anyone anywhere in the USA. This thing works all over, something like that. Um, but I didn't even ask for that, and I still got people. Uh, it doesn't show any shares here, but we, we it, it got shared, and the link got copied and pasted or whatever. But um, that's what I, I mean. You don't have to be real smart about it. I mean, so mine says Dallas Home Realty right here. You could easily go get, like, toddshomevalues.com. And, or a tiny URL or whatever, and it's going to go to the same place. But, I mean, I'm, I'm not a tech genius by any means. Kenny's in my office is probably on this laughing right now about how much I'm like, hey, I have an idea, and then he figures it out. But my point is it, the tool does all the work for you. If you can get people, I call it a funnel. If you can get pour a bunch of people through the funnel right here, you're going to get people that aren't in your market. And then you just want to follow up with them. With My script's very similar to Jeff's. Hey, I noticed you had filled out the form on the website trying to figure out what your house was worth in, in uh, Delaware. And uh, it looks like you've also been searching for some houses in Dallas on the website. That's awesome. I'm just curious if you might have interest in me introducing you to a really, really great agent in the Delaware area that I know through some networking I've done. Um, and then literally 
two seconds on your website just made you, I don't know, what do you, 20, 25 percent of a, of, of a deal in Delaware or whatever. But point being, all you have to do is get it out in front of people without a geographic target. And, and your Facebook circle or sphere may be all hyper local, but that's where pay per click can come into play or your existing database. Go through your database, everyone that's out of state, send it to them and say, hey, I know you're not in the market anymore, but I just wanted to let you know I added this and it would even work for you. Feel free to share it with your friends. Hope you're doing well. So there's super, super cheap and, and low cost ways to get this out to a lot of people. Yeah. Here's another one. <clears throat> um, can I set up a different lead page, page pictures? Would like the market to specific areas where different pictures would really help. I'm going to answer that one. <clears throat> yeah. That. that that is on the table. I'm not sure when it'll be done. It'll be phase two or three. We're going to keep adding a few enhancements that we think are better. So we are going to make the ability so you can add additional landing pages down the road. So the interface will change a little bit, kind of like creating an area page or content page you do on the website. <clears throat> You'll have pages in that seller lead generation tool. This is what I'm kind of envisioning. And you can add additional pages. And then, like, I live in Kailua, the, the town Kailua. So it would, I would just type in Kailua is the UR, or the slug, and what it would do is just add Kailua after the URL, and then I'd be able to upload a Kailua picture. So that way, if I'm doing specific stuff, yes. Yeah. So the answer is yes. That's a future enhancement. And another future enhancement is we're going to make a search widget. So you, like, kind of like our uh, search widgets from our doc for your property search. We're going to make a, a widget so you can add it to other additional pages on the website or on other websites or other marketing you're doing. It'll be a JavaScript search widget, and you'll be able to do that. Um, yeah. yeah, Jeff, the other thing I would say on that is until that's done, I, I would go in the back end and use like this aerial shot, or I would upload a shot from a distance or of a map or so, you know, something that doesn't show a specific property type that, that re uh -huh. resembles a certain geography and then Whoa. and I would use uh, forwarded and masked domains so you can have a domain that says bostonhomes.com or Boston home values and uh, you know farm and ranch value, property values com and it goes to the same widget and the, the photo you can get real creative you don't even have to have a photo it could just be blank and say what's my house worth but yeah. that's what we're we're playing with and testing all that and I would encourage people to you know, I, I'm I'm probably more annoying than most telling you what what additions would be cool, but we're all getting the privilege of using this while you guys weren't really ready for it. So I would just say there's a lot of creative things we can do to get the same functionality until it's really easy. Winning usually means you're willing to do the stuff that other people aren't willing to do when it's still hard. You know. Okay. All right. I think we're kind of running out of time. Can you pass the controls back to me, Todd, so I can end this thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I kind of forgot. I was <laughs> forgot. I was no, that's no, all right. That's great. You're going on. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go through this thing. I kind of blew it at the beginning, and it got chopped up. So I'm gonna have to have one of my guys help me edit this thing. Uh, but we are definitely going to um, hopefully put this up on our doc, so you guys can listen to it and watch it later. And hopefully, it's not too messed up because of me. All right. And I want to thank Todd for all his time for. Uh, you know, getting on here with us and sharing. We really appreciate it. And like I said, we're going to do some uh, future uh, hangouts, masterminding, and we're going to tap in to this client base that we have um, and and start sharing ideas. And if you guys are not on the Real Geeks Mastermind group, on our Facebook group, you should get on there because there's people sharing great ideas in there. And the more people we get in there sharing ideas, the better. And just so you know, the mastermind uh, the, or the Real Geeks Mastermind group is not a support group as far as like other agents can help you, but if there's technical issues you're having, you go to the Real Geeks website and fill out a support form so my support team can actually help you. But if it's just simple things like, hey, how do I do this? You know, like add a page or, or edit this or, you know, add an image or something, our, our customer base or our clients will usually hop in on that. But if you really need help with something a little more technical, support is there. You just go to the Real Geeks website, and there's the top navigation. There's a support link. Fill it out. Pick your issue and stuff, and they'll get back with you, okay? All right. Thanks a lot, Todd. I really appreciate it.
Yeah, it was a ton of fun. Thanks, guys. All right, thanks. Aloha, bye.